We did graduate quite a bit last year, but the best thing for us has been our young guys have really stepped up. Uh, they had a wonderful summer. They've worked really, really hard, and they've really grasped our offense, and, and they hit the first week really running. And, and, and I can't complain about their effort and how fast they've been picking things up. It's been awesome. I think that we, we can step up and fill in the shoes. We just got to find the right people that want to hustle and do the work. The plug-and-play approach is in full effect in the Gate City as Doug Dodds tries to help his offense recoup the nearly 4,500 yards of production it accounted for a year ago. It starts with a new trigger man at quarterback. Um, I've been working hard this summer. Uh, I just come into practice every day, wanting to learn, wanting to get better, learning more about the system, about the defense, and just working as hard as I can to improve each day. Uh, Drake's a great person to have on our football team. He does the right things, and, and that's, what we, uh, that's where it all starts. A guy that makes the right decisions at the line of scrimmage, and, and then we can go from there. The chief ground game gets a full makeover as well. Good-looking holdover offensive linemen Ryan Egley and Tanner Stinson inherit the burden of helming what was one of the state's biggest, most physical groups. Trevor Roth's considerable contributions running the football could well be divvied up. Dakota Shaw's rise will certainly help account for some of that lost physicality. I think production in the ground game this year is going to come down to just a, a group of guys. I mean, we're probably going to have a couple different types of back this year. I mean, Dakota Shaw has stepped up and he's been doing a nice job at tailback. Uh, and we've had some younger guys, some quicker backs have stepped in and do their things too. That collective could include transfer Brighton Smith, who looked last year like the next great Illini West tailback after accumulating 815 total yards and 12 touchdowns. And to round out the skill position talent, the receiver pool is good and deep as well, led by holdover Bryce Baxter. But whatever level of production Doug Dodds coaxes from his rebuild offense, it won't matter unless there's substantial improvement on the other side of the football. Yeah, well, I feel I feel that like we got a lot of kids that have moved up or came back out that can take care of the job. I mean, all it is is about hustling. Everyone's really flying around to the ball. We got a few things to clean up, but uh, it's coming together real, real nice. Alex is the base in our, our our linebacker core. I mean, him and Dakota did a lot of experience in linebacker and on defense last year, and also our secondary. I mean, those guys got a ton of time. They, they might have rotated in, but they, they logged quite a few miles on varsity football. Um, our D-line, uh, unfortunately, is a little inexperienced, but at the same time, uh, the, we, we're changing some things up up front, and we're getting some aggressive guys in there, and it's great to see. For all of the components that have changed in the Gate City this season, the expectation level for Keokuk football has not. And it is those high standards that set the template for Keokuk to chase an unprecedented third straight playoff appearance. It's really important to us. We're ready. We, we want to go to the playoffs. That's our goal every year. Hopefully we can go as far as we can.